All right, so I got out to test the new firmware on the Runcam Thumb and the new GyroFlow version 1.20. Now, the devs taught, said this morning that they were able to get better quality stabilization when they're working with Runcam. So Runcam released a new firmware that's supposed to uh, reduce the amount of frame drops from about every 15 seconds roughly to about every 250 seconds. So that's a huge improvement. Uh, they also said that they're going to have to work with the chip maker. Uh, Runcam said that they have to work with the chip maker in order to see if they can figure out how to get rid of the, the frame dropping uh, even at the 250 uh, second mark. But um, Elvin, who's one of the developers with GyroFlow, released a new lens profile, which is nice. So it's an official lens profile at 4K, uh, 30 at 16 by 9 ratio. And it seems to help out a lot. And I'm going to show you here in just one second. So I'm just going to grab a 4K 30. And I ran this all at auto, auto everything, just to make it so that it's just kind of like a baseline. Like originally, I was going to mess with the shutter a little bit and whatnot, but I ended up not doing that. Um, so here, let me put in Thumb Pro, and you're going to see there is the official Runcam Thumb Pro 4K 16 by 9 wide. So that's what we want. And once you select that, it's going to automatically go ahead and do your, your synchronization. This is something new with one version 1 1.2. And as you see, it's doing five, five sync points at one second search size. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put a low pass filter on there. And let's go see how this looks. So first of all, I'm actually gonna show you just how it looks without the stabilization. So as you can see, it's, you know, like a typical quad and it's very windy out here today. So it, the wind is having some issues with it and it's a, a, a tiny little two inch quad. So, you know, it's not going to be the most smoothest flight, you know, right from the get go. So now let's go back and let's watch this with the stabilization. And right off the bat, you can see a huge difference. It's actually nice and smooth, and it looks pretty damn good. This is now how I kind of expected it to be from the beginning. I wasn't talking perfect, absolutely amazing stabilization. I just wanted decent stabilization for an $80 camera. Now, there are some times where it does get jittery. Like, I believe here in a second we're going to get some jitters. I'm going to show you what I do for that. Um, actually, it handled it very well. The last time I ran this, it was actually jittering right there really bad. And then here comes another spot where it was jittering before. Let's see if it's going to do it. Yep, yeah, there we go. All right. So we got those jitters. As you can see, it's like bouncing up and down. So I'm going to come back to here, and I'm simply going to right-click where I have my marker here and add an auto sync there and I'm probably going to move just a little bit more forward add another auto sync and let's see how that handles it and we're still getting some of the jitters there but it took out a lot of it almost looks like let's see so we're getting some jitters in between so I mean, you could even throw another one right here. And it only takes a few seconds to do this. And this I'm absolutely absolutely fine with. It doesn't take that long to do. And it's, it's actually pretty simple. Um, and there we go. Jitters are pretty much gone. And everything is relatively smooth. And for just screwing around and flying around with an inexpensive camera, this is perfectly fine for me. Now, granted, this preview is in 720. After I go through and render it, it'll look much better than this. But I would say that it's a big success. They 
corrected a lot of the issues and now it feels like it's worth it to me that I would actually run this just for just some basic, simple fun flying, just to throw some video on YouTube. Yeah, I'd run this. And then once you're done doing that, all you simply do is you go through and you hit the export and it exports your file for you. So everything that I used was default. I didn't change anything. I just added a low pass filter uh, at 50 hertz, which they recommend doing anyway. The field of view, the smoothness, the zoning speed or zooming speed, dynamic zoom, everything is pretty much set to what they have already pre-designated for this um, video or for this uh, camera. Uh, by the way, it's actually it, the preview resolution is 1080, not 720. So I was a little wrong there. All right, so I hope this helps. Um, I'm glad that they actually kind of corrected these issues and made it a little bit better. Um, that just makes me want to use the camera now a little bit more than than in the past. In the past, I was like, I'm done with it. I'm not going to bother with it. It's a waste of my time. Everything looks like crap. It's actually worse after I stabilize it than it was before when it wasn't stabilized. Um, but now it actually is good and very, very usable. So way to go, Gyroflow. And way to go, run cam.